Hey, welcome to the Metabolic Motivation Show. My name is Dan O'Byrne, formerly a fatigued, flabby, and frustrated business executive who learned to use science-based lifestyle habits to reboot my metabolism so I could look better, feel better, and perform better, both at work, play, and in the bedroom. So if this sounds interesting to you, stick around, join our Facebook group, and uh, we'll also be interviewing experts here from around the world, and we'd love to get your feedback. So without further ado, let the show begin. And uh, we are live on the Metabolic Motivation Show uh, with Dr. Stephen Lin, who is in Australia. He is a, is a, pra- is a dentist, uh, also an interior designer for, for the mouth, uh, and a TEDx speaker. So uh, Dr. Lin, thanks so much for making time for us today. Thanks so much for having me today. Great yeah, you know, I was really excited about having you on because um, you know, we've had a wide range of uh, health experts and uh, doctors and nutritionists and psychologists. Uh, we've not had a dentist, and I think many people are really overlooking the uh, the direct, you know, the link between oral health and uh, and our you know total physical well being. Uh, and I think that's something you really touched on you know, on your uh, on your TEDx talk, which people should check out. Uh, could you tell us, you know, the gist of that of your TEDx talk? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right there in terms of kind of pinpointing. You know, it's something that we really miss out on in terms of you know, how our mouth actually connects and affects um, our, our body and, and health. And there's you know, there's a growing and, and a very established body of data now that shows the link between you know, dental diseases such as gum disease and linking to, to heart disease, to diabetes, to, to these metabolic problems that are, that are affecting our overall health. Um, and in my TEDx talk, I mean, I, I, I kind of went into the whole problem that dentists face in that, you know, unfortunately people just don't really understand this and there's... You know, there's a there's a few different ways you can analyze this. You know, how dental health fits into into society, but um, ultimately, you know, we need to get the dialogue out there that your mouth is important and it connects to your life and health. And one one point that I brought up in the talk that I thought that might spark spark some interest is that you know, gum disease is a vascular dysfunction um, disorder where you know if Chronically left um, left in the long term, then you will actually increase your risk of vascular dysfunction, leading to uh, male impotency. So, you know, and we're finding more and more conditions here that our that our mouth actually links to, and um, it's it's something that you know people you know, don't understand. And um, but uh, I think what you were talking about there in terms of you know talking about entire health and nutrition nutritionists um, is that. There's there's a lot of connections there between um, between our dental health and the way we eat that we're, we're, that we're not making, and um, I think that's somewhere that we're, we're going to make a lot of progress in, especially in, in the next couple of years, in terms of seeing our body as a as an entire whole organism that is affected by the way we eat, you know, which which has a direct link to our dental um, health, which has which absolutely connects to the rest of our body. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting space. Yeah, that's you know that's a great message, and uh, I think you will get uh, um, a lot of attention with or a lot of males out there to pay attention when we talk about uh, you know possible prevention of uh, erectile dysfunction um, or you know or anything leading to that uh, because um, I think that's something people are not not at all aware of. So what's your what's your point is if just to summarize it if I'm understanding it correctly we could say that gum disease is, has a vascular uh, component and it's an indicator of uh, vascular or circulatory problems is that right so therefore it also links to a greater probability of erectile dysfunction is am I understanding that right well so it, it's an inflammatory it's an inflammatory disease so um, what, what we have in um, long-standing periodontal disease is a, a long-standing infection, and so, and what a lot of the studies have found is that a lot of the bacterial markers actually impact the, the rest of our body. So we were have we we're having periodontal bacteria um, affecting um, you know the other end of the body, and and we're actually, for instance, the link between um, gum disease and heart disease is linked to a, 
a bacterial mimicry where the, the heart is actually, um, the, the bacteria actually mimic um, the, the heart tissue which causes an inflammatory response. So that's, what we're seeing here is that uh, the, the mouth is a very vascular um, organ um, yes. it, it's, and it absolutely connects to, to um, the rest of the body. And once a disease process reaches a certain level, it's, it, you know, we're talking about spreading everywhere. Okay, that's, that's fascinating. Um, yeah, I think so many of us, we, we sort of have, we, it's almost like we even disconnect with, uh, and I have uh, some dentists and, and, uh, and other doctors in my family, and it's almost like they don't even speak when we, when we go, they, uh, they tend to separate. Well, everyone talks about their specialty, but there's no one talking about the connection you know, between how these different, uh, and the joke we have uh, among some of my family and friends uh, who are in the, in the health profession is that in the future, you know, we're going to, if it keeps, if this super specialization keeps going, we're going to have doctors dedicated to, you know, the, uh, the, the small finger and another guy dedicated to the ring finger, but they're not going to be able to talk about the interaction between <laughs> these two fingers it's, you know, it's, in a hundred years. Uh, no, then that's a great analogy because you know that's that's how we've segmented you know medical specialities and you know the body just doesn't work that way. It's um you know it's completely counter counterintuitive to you know how we are as an organism and and um you know the dentist and, and doctor argument is a, is a prime example of how we need to you know kind of re rethink um a, a much more you know, holistic approach to you know disease process but also just health in general. Yeah, no question. No question. Well, there's, well, there's, I've got, I've got a number of questions. Let me try to just get through some of these, and I've got uh, also a few from um, that I took from uh, from some followers as well. So, uh, what for for people out there who are who are maybe waking up to this? Um, what is what are some of the what's the impact of not taking care of our of our oral health? What are some of the okay. impacts? Yes, yeah, so, I mean. The, uh, the one that I think the, the big space in um, that, that we're going to learn a lot about in in the dental um, field, especially, but um, also the connection between the mouth and and health, is that you know tooth decay. The, the dental um, fraternity have known for a long time that tooth decay is a bacterial disease. It's caused by a shift um, in a, a shift in, in disease causing bacteria in your mouth. Um, and we've actually linked that through studies that have, have studied our what our bacterial plaque was, you know, eight eight thousand years in the past was, and they they found that um, we our bacterial diversity has actually decreased since since uh, modern agriculture, since the industrial revolution, because of our diets. So, if you have a if you have tooth decay, then it, it means that your your mouth microbiome, which is what what we're, caught, we're starting to call it now. It has is overrun with these disease-causing bacteria, which is um, in tooth in um, in the case of tooth decay, it's Streptococcus mutans. Um, so you know, a simple cavity means there's much more going on than just you know you, you know you go to the dentist and get and get a filling, which is what um, or some people will just ignore it as sure. as we as we do fine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it, this kind of idea that the, um, the, the microbiome in the mouth um, is, you know, has a huge impact on, on the rest of our body. Now, now, if you think about how, you know, we know that the, that the modern diet changes the, um, the, the bacterial uh, flora of our mouth, so it, and this has been shown to also affect um, the, the bacterial flora of our gut. So, I mean, there's... In, in the gut, you know, we know the importance of the um, of the, the microbiome um, and, and all the disease processes that we're just starting to link to. Um, but w what studies are starting to show is that the that the mouth microbiome, you know, links to the gut microbiome, which makes absolute sense. You know, of course, this um, this would be the case. Right. Um, so, right. you know, there's t there's ten to the power of fourteen. Um, 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 different species of bacteria in, in the gut. Um, in the mouth, is 10 to the 10. So, um, you know, and, and what, we're, what we're finding here is, is that, the, you know, very early studies are, are showing that um, this shift in, in oral um, bacteria is actually causing other diseases like liver cirrhosis, like 
um, that have linked it to obesity, that have linked it um, to, to the diabetes process, which, which makes absolute sense. So I, I think we're on, you know, in, in the very early stages of, you know, really understanding how the mouth actually, you know, connects to our body because it, it, it makes complete sense, you know. We, you know, it's, it's our, you know, one and, you know, primary connection to the body. So um, the way we eat, you know, it's, it's our first, first point of digestion. It's, it's the, um, the start of the digestive tract. Um, it's, it's, you know, you, you're giving, you know, it, the messages from your environment by the food you put in there. So dental disease, I think, can be gauged as, a, as you know, one of the first indicators as to there's something else wrong with you and that we need to think about um, how we're, you know, approaching, you know, things right from the start in terms of eating, um, but, all, you know, also in the other lifestyle problems and, yeah. Yeah, no question. You know, I think sometimes we overlook that the, the basic, basically our GI tract, could we could say, actually starts in the mouth. You know, Absolutely. I, you yeah. know, like I remember one of the somewhere as a as a child, um, someone told me once when I was uh, eating too fast, as uh, as many Americans do, you know, trying to get to run and do something else, probably to get away from get away from the boring conversation at the table for, or something. I don't know. And someone <laughs> said, you know, digestion starts in your mouth. You better chew that food, or you're going to get sick. And uh, that phrase, digestion starts in the mouth, sort of stuck in my head. And it, um, you know, and it conjured up these images of, the, you know, of, of like a brick hitting my, my uh, stomach or something, you know. But, it, was, uh, <laughs> but it, did, it did sort of work. Would you agree that that's something also that's important for, for us, not, not only our oral health, but also using our mouth correctly with... Uh Absolutely, you know, like you said, the digestive process starts in the mouth, and there's there's um, there's actually, there's actually an um, Ayurvedic uh, principle where they say you should chew at least once for each tooth, and you know oh, wow. there's a lot. Of, yeah, it's it's uh, I like that analogy. Um, but if you think about it, you know, like the you know, when you when you put um, a piece of food into your mouth and you start to chew and create the bolus, you're it's interacting with saliva, and yes. so saliva, yes, yeah, saliva's job is to um, is to make the, the food less acidic. And so the longer it stays in the mouth, the, longer, the more digested it comes in um, by the chewing process. And when you swallow, the less acidic it is. So if you're eating and, and you're not chewing properly, then it's, more, it's, it's likely that you're um, going to be swallow, swallowing a much more acidic um, bolus from the mouth than if you would sit and actually chew it properly, which is how it's meant to happen, yeah. Yeah, that's... Well, you know, I remember, now I remember another... Uh, we had a family dinner once, and we had the uh, extended family, and we had one of the one of the dentists there, and uh, so he he was telling us some of these things. But in a his uh, he had a he had difficulty translating the language into something that kids could understand. So he uh, told us, you know, it's really important. To, it's really important to chew your food, and he said mastication is really important. Don't forget that. And so we all understood masturbation instead of mastication. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> so it was. Uh, so then, our we all got bad looks from our parents. So that. Was... <laughs> okay, so let me well, let me that change. Was, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Let me change gears here. Here's okay because this. Um, I know I'll. Uh, I don't want to forget this one. So let me go ahead and ask one of the one of the questions I was asked by a number of uh, of followers. Uh, I think this may have been on Facebook or Twitter. I'm not sure. But with how how is how would you rec for someone with let's say that you know someone out there has some gum disease they're sort of realizing they've realized wow you know this is actually you know more important than I realized I should do something about this um, obviously you know it's going to vary with you know the the degree you know how their uh, their situation is I'm sure but uh, what's a general, some general recommendations for deal, for someone who's already maybe has some, some gum disease, maybe some recess, recession, uh, something like that? Yes, I mean, as we said before, I mean, gum disease is, um, it, it's, it's a bacterial disease. So, I mean, we're, um, we're talking about, um, you know, imbalances in bacteria and, you know, the, the conventional dental treatment is, you know, and which um, obviously, you know, they, they need to be very, you know, fairly um, rigid with in terms of seeing the dental professional because um, when you do have dental pockets, um, it, 
you, it's very difficult to clean yourself. So it's it's important to you know be quite um, rigid and disciplined. Um, you know, working with your, your dental professional to keep your, your oral hygiene um, quite high. But I mean, I, I, I think you know, there's there's um, we need to be thinking about how to get the balance back um, in terms of the the, the bacterial microbiome. Um, I, I think you really need to think about you know in, in terms of how you refine carbohydrates. Um, it, it, you know, this modern industrialized type food, your cereals, your breads, um, your low-fat yogurts, you know, all these kind of things that have high sugar, um, re- refined, and we need, we need to think of strategies to, um, to replace this and, and, and eat a diet that's going to, um, going to, you know, help the, um, repopulate first your mouth, but also, you know, everywhere else, because we know how gum disease is to link to, um, you know, to, like we said, to your heart disease and your diabetes. So, yeah, uh, well, a I'd be thinking very much um, beyond you know the effect of this in my mouth. Um, B, you know, you, you need to to heavily work with um, your your dental professional to to um, and you know it's not an easy job sometimes with you know if if they do have serious pocketing you know sometimes you know it, it it's a downhill spiral. But I think we can we, we can take control with taking a, a bit of a wider look in terms of. Um, you know, changing the whole picture, yeah. and you know, I, I think you you really need to see how um how you, you know, a good a good breakdown of, of of how your diet um has been up until you know up until this point, and 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 make um pretty significant uh, moves to you know change that. So diet, diet, as well as seeing your dental professional, or both. So we should look at both of those strategies. Um, what about uh, with regards to you know? There's a there is uh, I know some people ask me also that uh, they it was suggested to them that they, that, that they take a round of antibiotics. Uh, some people are uh, are worried about you know the amount of the overuse of antibiotics. Is it is the, is this always necessary or or what's your experience on that? In in terms of um, antibiotic use for periodontal infection. Um, uh, I would um, I would only um, recommend that if it's if we've got a, a severe acute infection. Um, however, you know this what we've got to remember if it if it's to that point, you know it we're usually beyond the um, you know unfortunately sometimes beyond the the, uh, the realms of, of saving some some teeth, um, which is unfortunate. Um, I would uh, take a much longer. Um, Approach to you know how we're thinking. There's no knockout punch to um, to periodontal disease. Uh, the, the, um, I like that phrase. That's good. So no knockout punch. There's no no magic bullet. No secret weapon. <laughs> yes, I mean look, so, some some dental professionals will um, will recommend the use of antibiotics, but I mean I, I think you really need to. Um, you know, think, take a like I said, a wider look at your health. You know, you mean you, we, you know, we need to think about how these antibiotics are affecting everything else. And you know, just wiping out the um, what's there, you know, we're really not replacing and um, you know, trying to repopulate with um, you know, with probiotic and and, and good bacteria. Like, um, I, I really think that we, you know, we need to, you know, start taking taking this this. Um, Bacterial approach, you know, where we're, you know, you know, like obviously we, we have we have the conventional um, ways of treating these, you know, with antibiotics and you know heavy, heavy dental treatments. But I mean, you know, I think if you it, periodontal disease doesn't, you know, it, it it really doesn't just just run away, you know, like it, it's it's a it's a long game, and and your whole entire um, health and lifestyle, you know, is is going to play play a big role, including things like stress. Right. Oh, that's well. That's fascinating. So it really is a. So uh, there is really a lot of other things. So we really should look at our whole health and not just, you know, not just thinking as we often do, compartmentalize. Uh, you know, I'm gonna gonna bombard this portion of my body with antibiotics, and boom, it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. Exactly. Yeah. It's new. You know, like the I don't know if you've seen the ads where they, they have the the cheeks blow up, and you know, it's, it's you, you mightn't have seen it. Yeah. No. No. They're, 
they put the mouthwash in, it's like a dynamite, and it's kind of like oh, the cheese. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what, the thing is, yeah. I've, I, I got rid of, I got off of television, I swore off television, except for a few sporting events, um, and I still, right. get, you know, about <laughs> years ago, and so, but I do occasionally, when I'm visiting family, get pulled, get sucked back in, and, and uh, have yeah. to watch. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, so uh, let's let's uh, let me see if I can throw in another uh, something else here. Um, what about um, what? Now here's another question people ask me. Yeah, with regards, people are people that are watching television are also oftentimes bombarded and by that very advertisement uh, or type of advertisement, and it you know a lot of the advertisements prey on our our fears of. Uh, or social fears of, you know, of having some, uh, you know, like for example, of having bad breath. And so they bombard us with that fear, ratchet it up, and then say, oh, and here's the solution. Take, you know, blah, 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 mouthwash. And it, uh, so what would be a better way for someone who uh, doesn't want to just do what the advertisements say, but they do want to make, t you know, they, or they are concerned about, you know, maybe they have bad breath. Uh, should they be thinking about it? Uh, you know, a, in a different way. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of different, um, you know, potential uh, origins of bad breath. Um, you, you know, one, it, it, I mean, the, the first thing we, you know, we need to look at is, you know, if, if you do have some kind of um, gum disease process going on, then you know, it, it's most likely um, beyond potentially beyond your oral hygiene capabilities to, you know, to to get in and clean some of these places. So a localized um, Dental disease issue can cause um, can cause bad breath, but you know there's a, there's a wide range of things. You know, you, you, all the dietary issue, you know if, if you dietary um, factors that can cause um, you know if your intakes of, of, of certain. But the other thing too is that if your gastrointestinal system, if you're having problems, then you get you know there's you know in terms of reflux, we see a lot of patients that have um, that, that have issues with, with bad breath, and they and you know these. People, you know, chronically clean teeth. They use ten mouthwashes a day, and it's not going to do anything. So, you know, there's often, you know, there's an underlying reason there for um, for, for these kind of things. And uh, I think, um, you know, you definitely need to take a, a these things that are advertised on television aren't are very most likely not going to, you know, be the the solution for for, for you. Yeah, I think that's a good a good point. I remember. Um Years ago, uh, I was doing an internship uh, with a, a hospital-based wellness and sports medicine center, and uh, they they had a, a psychologist on staff, and uh, so I was doing part of the uh, some of the some of the work with him, and it was quite interesting. And he used to often say, you know, is that a symptom or is it a problem? And I think that's a case where maybe we could say the bad breath is maybe it's not the the problem; it's actually a symptom of a, another problem, and. Perhaps it makes more sense to figure out to resolve the the deeper problem and not just try to cover it up with some kind of antiseptic, uh, you know, mouthwash that's going to make someone else a lot of money. And uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a complete band-aid approach. Yeah, it's um, absolutely yeah. But that's kind of unfortunately that's a lot of uh, a lot of our chronic diseases in general or chronic problems that tends to be the approach because commercially. You know, if you can offer a Band-Aid approach and keep people coming back, you know, there's a lot of money to be made there. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the, you know, the great thing for the companies there is that you stay sick and, you know, you keep buying their products. So, I mean, it's, that, that's the ideal situation. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, it's, and, and that's where I think we, we've got, uh, hopefully, you know, people like, uh, you know, people like you uh, and others are, uh, you know, I think are doing a great job in trying to trying to make this connection. You know, and I think that's where, and that's where, you know, making the whole field of the healthcare field compartmentalized actually removes the possibility. I think it's a way of sort of disempowering the health professional, uh, and it allows the uh, you know the big companies who are selling these band aid products to uh, to dominate because they have the money to pay for the advertising. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it, it really is a broken cycle, you know. We, we 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 don't think outside of our our little box at all, you know. Yeah. And, well, hats and off to you for you know, you're, really you're doing your part, and uh, I think I want to recommend to anyone out there if you've not seen your TED talk to definitely check that out. Um, 
So let's let's go back to oh, another one other practical thing. I know this is this can seem kind of boring, but but uh, you know for some people out there, there there are you know they go to the supermarket and they see what do you see rows and rows and rows from you know from floor to floor to uh, to, to head high uh, a stack of of different commercial toothpaste and brushes and flossing materials and all this stuff. Um, and people feel confused and overwhelmed, and so they oftentimes, what do they do? They just grab the first thing that they that they recognize. They re and uh, what is a what's where should people spend their money? If you know, apart from seeing a good dental dental professional, what what's important is it um, for you? For example, what is your what do you do for your own teeth? Your daily routine? Could you could you share that with us? Like it's it's as simple as a piece of string of floss. A bit of floss, a toothbrush, you know, like it, it's, um, it's completely, um, some people have different preferences and you need to find what suits you, but the mechanical um, process of cleaning is, has been shown to be the most important in terms of, you know, especially the people, um, you know, battling with, with gum disease, but also we were talking about prevention as well. Um, absolutely, you know, so we need to get in there, you know, floss once a day. So flossing is, is, is something that I tried to... Um, Tried to convince people to do in, in my TEDx because I, it's honestly one of the hardest thing to to get patients to to change. I, I I don't know what it is, but people just don't like putting a bit of string between their teeth. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, like it, it it really is that simple. You know, um, you, any standard you know fluoride toothpaste or anyone with a, with a, a normal um a normal you know risk of tooth decay is is fine. Um, but you know, it's 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 a matter of changing your habits and and, and getting in there and, and making sure that you're flossing, uh, f flossing once a day and, and brushing twice a day. And it's 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 really not that um, not that you know as complicated as it might seem when you when you're walking down the aisle and you, and you see row upon row of of these products. And you know they you know there's just really um, not a lot of difference between some of, a lot of the times. And what about the you know, you have the the hard bristle, the medium bristle, the soft bristle. Is there any any anything? Is there is that important to us? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, look, uh, some people do get a bit rigorous. So we we find that the soft bristle is um is is the um, has the best results because we don't damage the gums. Um, I I, I use a small soft toothbrush. Um, so the the two the, the two variants I recommend is either a small soft toothbrush or a or an electric toothbrush because the electric does the um you know the work for you and it stops you from you know really you know scrubbing and getting that kind of bicep movement that people do when they when they brush and actually they actually do um do quite a bit of damage to their gums if if you are using a harder bristle um, brush so. Yep. So I, I recommend a soft, um, small soft brush, and a, or, or an electric, depending on the, the patient's preference, and either man, uh, manual dexterity. Or. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a that's a good point. Especially, I think that uh, a lot of times people do get uh, get. I noticed my bicep used to be bigger on the right side from all of the uh, <laughs> all of the tooth brushing, and uh, so that's uh, right. <laughs> so you know, speaking of that, there's also a. Um, there's also a uh, another mechanical toothbrush that uses that's a that uses water. Uh, I don't know if that's you know it's it's highly marketed. It's uh, I don't know and it has uh, it has good it has some really good publicity. But once again, it's you know I don't know if that's it's relevant. Is that is there is the the mechanical water brush uh, water pick thing? Is that something that you have any experience with? Yeah, they um. It, the the water pick. I mean, like I said, you know, if, if, if anyone can um, get in there and you know and, and clean between the teeth with, with a piece of floss. But there are there are some different um, different tools out there. You know, like picks of brushes, um, you know, interdental sticks and, and um, brushes. But the the water picks one that is is kind of a, an automated one. And I've seen some quite good um, results because some people do like it. You know, it does take out. Like I said, people do have an adverse um, kind of. Reaction to the whole um, to the whole flossing thing. So, if if people are going to use the water pick um, once a day, then I've had some good results in terms of you know people having good control of their plaque. Um, but it, it is a personal preference thing. But also to some pe people with gum disease that have some advanced pocketing, it is a little bit difficult to get into. And the water pick does provide 
um, a bit of an, an, another method to kind of get into those hard to reach places. So yeah, I, I, I definitely speak to your dentist about it. You know, your, your mouth, everyone's mouth is different. So um, and he'll be able to tell you what what or they'll be able to tell you sorry what they're. Um, what you're doing good and what you, what you're doing bad, and whether you know maybe you should be thinking about you know a, a certain type of interproximal cleaner. Right. Um, yeah, it's good to know. Good to know. Uh, let's see. Well, how about if we ch changing gears a little bit? Um, is there um, as far as nutrition goes? Uh, we talked about uh, we talked a little bit about that. What about supplementation? Is that something you you enter into? I mean. The, Supplementation in terms of, um, you know, uh, there, there's some areas where I think this is, um, I mean, in terms of eating a, you know, a whole um, whole food, uh, you know, balanced diet, I absolutely, um, you know, try and get you know, my patients to be, to understanding how, you know, what we're missing out on and what we're, um, but the, there are definitely some um, areas, I mean, I, I'm not sure if you're, you're familiar with um, Western A. Price. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, so he, somewhere on the shelf there. <laughs> yeah, physical de degeneration. Yeah, really big on the, on the on the fat soluble vitamins. Uh, exactly. High yeah, liver yeah. oil and the the uh, high vi the well the uh, free ranged butter uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. So I mean, his tooth decay um, remedy was the the butter and and the the, the high vitamin um, cod liver oil um, yes. and. And if you're thinking about that, you know, you, you're getting a, a, a um, you're, you, like you're getting a concentrated shot of vitamin D, vitamin A, um, all the all the fat soluble vitamins that are you know often the, and what he theorised as being deficient in, um, in in the modern diet, and that's you know why we why we're having you know this degeneration of, of dental health. So, um, and and the diets that he um, that he recommended were, you know, were heavily fat-based diets, and I think, you know, for people that do, you know, not everyone's the same, but for people that um, have bad, um, bad results from eating, you know, a high carb, refined carbohydrate diet, which is what we are, um, you, know, you know, often, you know, not we don't have much choice but to 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 be on. So I think substituting with um, a higher amount of fats in the diet to you know, to replace these sugars and these refined carbohydrates, you know, we're, we're going to find that we're getting a lot more of these fat soluble vitamins, um, and and we're, and you know we're going to go down the the, the Western A. Price road of, of hopefully um, preventing um, you know these dental diseases. Yeah, no, no question. Um, I'm actually uh, I'm actually diabetic myself, uh, and have been able to stay off of uh, with a high fat diet. Have been able to stay off of insulin uh, ever since well, wow. this was diagnosed 20 years ago. Uh, I'm now in my late 40s and uh, yep. never, never. Now, if I were to go uh, conventional, you know, conventional diet, I would probably be on insulin in a in a couple of months. You know. <laughs> so the, yeah, that's exactly the you know we just there's an amazing amount of things we can do with diet. You know, and it's and especially if you think about. Um, Tooth decay—it all starts there. So, it, absolutely, I, I think there's there's a lot to say about, this, like especially you know the, the high fat diet in terms of um, you know just replacing these these really refined and industrialized um, carbohydrates that we, that we so often have. Yeah, yeah, I think that's there's there's uh, there are people you know we forget. I remember growing up once again being bombarded by the advertisements for you know the healthy uh, whole wheat cereal that uh, yeah. and you have the the beautiful image with the uh, this idyllic field of wheat, you know, and then you look at the ingredients, and it's corn syrup, sugar, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and a bunch of chemicals, and uh, they sprayed some vitamins on, t you know, some synthetic uh, vitamins that come from a laboratory on top of and in this big factory, and then it's vitamin enriched, you know, and so the mothers yeah, see that, and oh yeah, that's for Johnny, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, and and you, you know, as a kid, you have two or three bowls of that a day, and then you know, we wonder why you know we've got a, I mean, for instance, we've got a mouthful of um, mouthful of uh, decay. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. With, you know, with skim milk because oh, the fat was bad. You know, we were sold that, 
Uh, and many people still are yeah. still are on that. You know, it's uh, it's amazing. You walk around the states, and you know, you see two out of three people are overweight. A th- one out yeah. of three are obese. Uh, you guys are 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 get are close to that. Uh, how was your obesity yeah. level there? Yeah, we're, we're, we're very much on, online. I actually think there might have been some stats that we were, even had a, have, had a top, which is quite Ooh. disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. So per capita, yeah, it's um, exactly. There's something that we're, you know, that like as a society we're doing very wrong. And, 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 and like you said, that, that, that's that scenario where we're feeding kids, you know, that, that, that kind of thing and calling it food. It's just, and it's, a, it's a travesty, really. And, you know, and, but hopefully, you know, we're starting to wake up to it, and I think you know that we can really, um, you know, really do some good things in terms of helping people to understand exactly, you know, um, how how things start. Well, in my case, for you know, how things start in the mouth from, from very much when they start eating, and how it affects their whole body, and how you can really change your life and health. And and you're an amazing um, example of that. You know, having a, you know, I'm sure your, your doctors were quite. Um, Concern when you when you when you didn't go down the insulin road. Yeah, well, you know, I was studying health science, and I was also uh, volunteering uh, to be a guinea pig in, in lab experiments. You know, I was working with the doctoral students as a as a nineteen twenty year old, and uh, uh, because I wanted to learn, and I found it actually more interesting to be in the laboratory than to be listening to just the textbook lecture of. You know, here's the Krebs cycle, and here's the, uh, you know, here's the metabolism of glucose. Here's the breakdown of insulin from the pancreas. Blah blah blah. You know, um, and uh, my my thought at that time was to go to medical school. In the states, it's a graduate program. You know, you get your undergraduate degree, and uh, uh, here in, in Spain, it's it, you go right in. But uh, in the states, you you get your undergraduate degree, you take your qualifying exams. And uh, if you do well, you know, you get accepted and, and maybe you get scholarships and blah, blah, blah. So that was my plan. But actually, the, um, by being in, in that environment, I realized how much we can control our own health uh, based on what we – based on our lifestyle. And I finally realized, you know, this is crazy. And I talked to – I interviewed some doctors uh, and some of them – some in my family, some not. And realized, man, this is totally going toward, toward pharmaceutical and, uh, and you're kind of stuck even if you – because you have the protocol, and if you don't, if you violate those protocols, well, one, you're going to not make any money, uh, and second, you might get kicked out and lose your license. And I realized, yeah, man, I should exactly. just not get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, disturbing reality, really, isn't it? That um, the whole system is there, for, you know, to, to to direct people on, you know, these these commercially driven um, medications and. and and you know, like the conversation about you know diet, and you know, like like people like yourself, just it just doesn't really, um, it doesn't resonate in in the in, in the health professional circle nearly enough. Yeah, well, you know, it's one of the things. Um, I don't know if you've read the book, the, or or probably actually, it's a huge book. Very few people have actually read it, um, but a certain, but if you could skim parts. There's certain areas that are great. Uh, for, the Four Hour Body, which is kind of a compilation. It's uh, an American writer, Tim Ferriss, and uh, anyway, one of his points is that, convi- is that conventional wisdom in almost every field is often wrong, and, uh, and science, is, science, and especially health science, is uh, the conventional wisdom, uh, as we know, uh, you know, has been, well, been shaped by the multi-million dollar advertising campaigns, and it's oftentimes been shaped to sell products, and so we really have to, have to stop and say, hey, you know, let's just like as Henry Ford, the 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 creator of Ford Motor Company, said a hundred years ago, the hardest job that a man or a woman will ever have is to think. And it, yeah, not, that, that's exactly not it. just regurgitate and accept, you know, what everyone's saying. So if we simply say, hey, look, look at my grandparents who lived to be, you know, ninety something, or my great grandparents who lived, you know, longer than that, um, they didn't have all these. They didn't have the the advances in medical care we have now, yet they had its great. They had a really healthy, long life. They weren't taking, yeah. but they weren't taking any pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, they weren't. You know what was going on? Well, you know, obviously they were benefiting from other things. So uh, anyway, that's kind of getting off on a tangent here. But and I know we're running short on time. But um, let me let me just kind of wrap things up. Um, if if there was. We've talked about a lot of things today. We've talked about nutrition. We talked about uh, about 
you know, cleaning, taking care of your teeth. We talked about the connection with dental health and your overall health. Is there anything else that if anything else you would want, you'd like to, uh, that we didn't cover that you think would be important for people to know? Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, like I said, you know, we often miss, um, you know, miss how our, our mouth and, and dental health kind of, um, kind of, uh, it plays a big role in, 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 in the rest of our health. But I mean, you know, like, uh, and, you know, shifting to that kind of, um, you know, to that, to that kind of mindset, you know, really, you know, requires stepping back. Um, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, that we, we don't realize will be, that will affect, our dental, like I said, like, like our, our stress levels. So people that, um, people that are highly stressed and sleeping poorly, you know, Will show up and, and sit in the dental chair, and I'll know straight away that they're uh, that they're either um, you know doing too many hours at work, or they're or, or they're not sleeping well, or they're you know having you know they're going through a, a divorce, unfortunately. Or um, so you know, there's the way your life um, your life and your lifestyle uh, affects your health. It, it goes much more deeper than 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 you think. So I think things like stress, things like exercise, things like um, you know, obviously you, you, you're eating, but it all comes into you know if, if you if you're doing these things you, and and you understand and you feel the impact on your body, you, you're going to go to much more effort, and you're going to to it's just going to be, become a part of your life. Um, you know, I, I think if you know if, if someone you know in terms of changing a habit like like flossing, I, I, I really it's something that we dentists struggle with, but I mean, you know, if, if you can get someone, you know, to go for a 20 minute jog in the morning is, and, you know, then you know, a, a two minute, you know, flossing session, um, after they go, before they go to work, you know, isn't that, you know, it, we're building things in here that are, that are beneficial for everything and not just, not just your teeth, but your entire health. So, I mean, I think there's a whole, um, stepping back there, you know, and, and, and thinking of your health as a whole, you know, um, it's too often with dental health that we, you know, you know, we see it as just this compartmentalized, um, you know, hole in our head that we have to go and, um, you know, you know, get fixed every now and again. And it costs too much money, and but if you know, if, if you really integrate, you know, healthy life, a healthy lifestyle, in, um, change it, um, to yourself. You know, you, you're going to do it automatically, and um, I think that's something that you know that uh, I'm really like more people um, kind of seeing and understanding. Yeah, no question. Great advice. Uh, you know, and that just brings to mind a last one last topic uh, that I, I don't I don't recall um, if it was Dr. Deborah Gordon or Kirk or Kirk Parsley, who's a Navy SEAL doctor. Um, I was talking to one of those guys and they were talking about the same topic of trying to get people to adopt that. You know, we all oftentimes tell people, OK, you need to do this, that, and, and this other thing, but actually getting the, this implementation, you know, it's, uh, we, we, you know, we have trouble enough keeping up, keeping our computers running, but, uh, we find it oftentimes easier to keep the computer or the cell phone running than to keep our bodies running. And so one of the tactics that they were suggesting was, uh, what's something called habit stacking. And that is linking, uh, you, you link that, that you have to link the new habit into a part of your current routine because if you just decide okay i'm going to do you know let's say like today i'm going to i'm going to do i have a minimum obligation with myself that i have to do 20 minutes of hard exercise um and uh and i know i'll do once i get started i'll find it easy but just getting started because i've got a lot of things to do it's easy for me to not do that so so if I don't go to the gym, then I'm gonna then I'm gonna have to do just push-ups and air squats right here on the floor, uh, and I and I'm gonna do something. Yeah, I've just got I know that I already know. So now I know I have to do. I've just decided it's not gonna be. It's there's not a question of uh, and I'm gonna do it before I have dinner. So I've uh, I've got a, I've got it stacked with my habit to have dinner, and I know. So anyway, that's one suggestion with with flossing too. You might. That uh, for people that is to try to link it to something else, you know, either do it before you brush your teeth or do it after. But you have to have a have it linked to something. Maybe you know whatever it might be, link it. So uh, yeah, exactly. Like, like what what you're talking about, you know, it, it's it's incorporating into your life, isn't it? It's, it's um you know, I, I, one other thing I think too is that you know people really need to get understand the why. Um, yes. You know, if, 
the, the why is, you know, if, if, if I'm just lecturing someone, you know, telling them, you know, look, if, if next time you come in and your plaque level's here, you know, you're going to get gum disease, you know, it, it really needs to resonate in, in your life how, why this is important. And uh, I think, you know, that, that's a personal thing, you know, people, um, you know, people find different things important in their life, but you need to find yourself what's, what's important and what's going to be the why for you to make a positive change. And uh, I think that's something that, you know, with health professionals, we really need to kind of, to connect to people to, to get messages through is, is the why. Why, why do people want to, why do they want healthier lives? Why, you know, why do they want to change their behavior and, and um, you, you know, I, I think that's, and that's, you know, part of communication, but that, that's something that, um, that if you are thinking about change, you really need to get a hold of, you know, yeah, no question. I, I think my, my mother's a psychologist, actually, and she all, oftentimes told us that why to before how to. Exactly. To exactly. sum it up. So I think that you're totally on the right track. Uh, wow, this has, been, uh, this has been a great interview. Time has just flown by here. And uh, so uh, thanks so much again. I'm going to – this will be going up on YouTube. I'll let you know uh, it'll probably be later this – It'll probably in the next month. Uh, we've kind of got a backlog right now of interviews we've got to get processed, and sure. um, and I'd also like to let people know people out there that might want to contact you, that find you online, uh, um, or to work with you or something. What's the best way to find you? So I've actually just just about to launch a new website, which is um, drstephenlin.com, and um, yeah, they'll be uh, trying to build a resource there around. Um, health and nutrition, and, and and how it all builds into into our our dental health. Um, but but also, yeah, you can reach out to me on Twitter at Dr. Stephen Lin, um, and and on Facebook at Stephen Lin Dentist. Great. And then if, I imagine if someone wanted to look at look up your TED Talk, they could probably just Google. You know, what, what would that be? TED TED Talk. Yeah. So if, if you Google TEDx, the power of a smile, Stephen Lin, that should come up. And oh, great! Yeah, I like that title, the power yeah. of a smile. That's great. It's a powerful thing, Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no question, no question. Hey, wonderful man, this has been cool hanging out with you. And uh, uh, if you ever get over, if you're ever going to be coming to Spain, definitely let me know, and uh, hope we can uh, give you some advice or you know uh, take you out for a meal or something. And uh, so uh, I know it's a long way, but uh, it's a good trip. Absolutely. Uh, don't worry, we're heading into winter here, so it's very much on the mind. I'm going to need some vitamin D at some point. So. Oh, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. We'll ship some out your way, man. Hey, well, cool. Thanks again for everything. We'll be in touch, and uh, if you ever, if I can ever do anything for you, let us know. Great, Dan. It was a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure same here, man. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Hey, before you go, three quick things. Uh, first, if you like this video, please share it. Second, if you'd like to empower yourself on a regular basis, check out all the uh, free information we have over at MetabolicMotivation.com. And thirdly, if you'd like to fast track your own progress so you can look better, feel better, and perform better, we are now offering free 15-minute uh, phone consults to answer your biggest question. And uh, all you have to do is go to metabolicmotivation.com and uh, just click on the Contact Us button. So that's all for now. Thanks again and uh, talk to you soon.